Hello, this is Ana Maria Berea. I am a professor of data sciences at George Mason University and an affiliate faculty with NASA Frontier Development Lab. And I'm going to present you today uh, the work uh, that I did uh, together with Andres Munoz from Jaramillo, who is also a researcher at the Southwest Research Institute and an affiliate faculty at NASA Frontier Development Lab on the analysis of um, the stars and the language of the stars. NASA Frontier Development Lab, or FDL, is a research accelerator that brings together data scientists and space scientists to solve some of the most difficult space and planetary problems using AI. This project is a spin-off of one of the main challenges that identified star spots in Kepler data, but in this spin-off project we are looking at applications of specific AI techniques such as natural language processing to time series, specifically light curves, in order to identify both unique features and patterns in time series in general and in light curves in particular. We both construct and derive informational building blocks that are characteristic to the light curves of the stars in a subset of Kepler data, and we compare these methods to more traditional machine learning applications such as clustering. We show how this new methodology rooted in NLP can be a good alternative for the analysis of light curves and potentially for identifying exoplanetary transit as unique linguistic features. The idea for this project came from asking the following questions, one pertaining to advancing a potentially new methodology in machine learning and another one pertaining to astrophysics. One, can we use NLP to discover features in time series? If yes, how good is it comparatively to other methods such as clustering? And two, can we create a dictionary of star features that we can use as a genetic code to catalog and identify any star and that we can also use to simulate stars that we have not yet observed? Starting with these questions, we embarked on an exploratory research to understand whether a duo of a combination of ML methods and an application to starlight curves can help us discover features and patterns within time series in general and within light curves in particular. The rationale, or the big why, of such methodological and science-specific exploration stems from a few facts that we try to connect coherently. Basically, NLP is good at discovering patterns in messy or noisy unstructured data such as languages, and it's also great for creating vocabularies, dictionaries, or taxonomies. NLP is also good at creating new and large data, uh, texts or data from small lists of dictionaries and vocabularies. Based on these assumptions, our first methodological challenge came from trying to understand the best method or algorithm to create textual data for our NLP goals from numeric data for um, our given time series. In other words, the first step was to create the words, the letters, or the n-grams from light curves data. For this proof of concept, we use 632 original Kepler light curves with the idea to scale it up to analyze and parse more than 110,000 light curves, data available during the FDL program of summer of 2020. If this proves successful, we aim to afterwards add test light curve data as well. The light curve data we used therefore consists of 632 time series collected over a period of about 40 years on a cadence of every 20 minutes. We used six different methodologies to create six different corpora from this Kepler dataset. And basically each corpus is a collection of 632 individual books and each book is a sequence of the engrams that we created based on these following methods. The first one, being based large, um, was being the, um, where we bin the data in bins of 10, basically one order of magnitude, and for each bin we assigned the bin XX character engram. The bin by small, uh, in this method, we bin the data in bins of 100, basically two orders of magnitude, and for each bin, we assign the bin XXX character engram. The peaks and throws method, for each sequence of consecutive peaks and throws in the time series, we assign the POSXX character or NEGXX character engram, where XX is basically the number of consecutive peaks or throws in the that we observed in the data. The fourth method, PD clustering based, is based on measurements of entropy and complexity in the time series that has been previously published in the literature. The fifth one, log rank frequency based, um, in this method we created the engrams based on the rank of the frequency of the data given by the distribution of these data points in the light curves. And the sixth one, uh, the free movement based, 
uh, in this movement, we, in this method, we partition the data into six types of movements of any free consecutive data points in the time series, as described in the literature as well. Here are some examples of the methods we used behind creating these engrams, particularly for methods 4 and 6, based on frequently used methods of decomposing time series. On the left, there is the probabilistic distance clustering, or PD clustering, and on the right, there is the free consecutive uh, movements, both of them have be, having been previously published in the literature. For each of the six corpora, we used several clustering methods such as k-means and vbscan on both the distributional differences where we calculated the kolmogorov smirnov statistic and on the LSA or latent semantic analysis, the semantic similarities of the engrams. The following slides show the distributions of the engrams in each of the six created corpora and give an idea about how these engrams and star books look like. So in this example, we have corpus one and corpus two, corpus one being the peaks and throws in this example, corpus two being the bind one small, corpus three here being the bind one uh, large, corpus four here being uh, the PD clustering, corpus 5 being the log rank frequency, and corpus 5 being the free movement one. Based on many trials and observations, we found two important results. That the semantic similarities data renders more and better populated clusters than the KS data, which is non-semantic, and that the engram method 5 is worth investigating more in terms of how similar the light curves in each cluster are. Here are some examples of different clusters between the semantic and non-semantic methods we used on the light curves. In this example, we have cluster three, for instance, from the semantic uh, method we used um, on the left and on the right cluster one from the non-semantic or KS method. Um, here is another example from clus cluster 11 in semantic um, method on the left and cluster two from the non-semantic uh, method on the right. Um, and we also observed that engram methods 1 and 2, the binning ones, show that the Shannon entropy of the engrams to be the closest to the Shannon entropy of the curve light itself. We are still investigating the usefulness of this result and whether this is meaningful for our analysis on, and our purpose of um, creating uh, taxonomies and vocabularies of stars. Our project is only in a preliminary stage, but we wanted to show a proof of concept for a new methodology based in natural language processing that we can use to catalog and categorize time series phenomena. Our future work includes a refinement of the engram method 5, an analysis of the co-occurrences and similarities of the engrams within the six corpora, and a more thorough analysis of the entropy-based methods shown here, as well as a supervised algorithm for n-gram creation, where instead of us um, um, thinking or giving the methods for how to create the n-grams, we will be discovering um, an n-gram create, um, an, a method for n-gram creation. Additionally, we will be looking at scaling up the analysis to include significantly more light curves that would diversify the STARS dictionary, both on from Kepler and TAS missions. This will help create complete taxonomies and dictionaries of the stars. We would also like to thank uh, Dr. Gibor Basri for providing the cleaned and curated Kepler light curve dataset for this project, as well as the Starspots team at NASA FTL for providing useful comments and advice. Thank you very much. <laughs>